One of the greatest challenges facing our generation is the protection and management of the natural world and its valuable resources. We believe effective conservation starts with an understanding and appreciation for the Earth's natural processes. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation, or UNESCO for short, has started an initiative to increase public knowledge of the natural world through exploration of significant landscapes across the globe. This initiative has culminated in the development of geoparks within sites of international, geologic, ecologic and cultural significance. These sites to be managed holistically, carrying the ideals of protection, education and sustainable development. There is an extensive network of over 120 UNESCO geoparks, but most are concentrated in Europe and China. Recent years have seen the development of geoparks spreading across the globe, but this development has not reached New Zealand. Te Pataka o Rakahautu, or Banks Peninsula, may be the site of New Zealand's first UNESCO geopark. Hi, I'm uh, Sam Hampton. I'm a, a Christchurch local and lived on and off of Banks Peninsula my whole life. And I guess in the last few years I've kind of been one of those principal kind of pushers for the geopark concept. So I came involved with the geopark effort on Banks Peninsula after a community meeting um, a few years back and that was made up of um, community members of Banks Peninsula who had seen and heard of the concept of geoparks in terms of a global impact. Prior to the, the Canterbury earthquakes I'd been looking at Banks Peninsula as a geopark just very quietly um, and looking at the potential of that as a postdoc. And so when this meeting came up, it was like, oh, somebody else is interested in this idea or concept for Banks Peninsula. A geopark is composed of a number of sites of importance, not only for geological reasons, but also by virtue of their archaeological, ecological or cultural values. The UNESCO framework for a geopark is, is pretty loose and it can be driven by the community that wants to achieve this geopark status. Multiple sites of significance, called geopoints, will make up a geosite, and a series of geosites make up a geopark. More than 90 potential geosites have been recognised on Banks Peninsula. Within Banks Peninsula, one of the key things we're looking at is each site that we're proposing has this unique blend of geology, biology, geoarchaeology, history and conservation and ecotourism already embedded there which is really unique in terms of a concept of a, a geopark. We like to think of the geology as the base layer for the incredible ecosystems that make up this world. And these ecosystems provide the resources for humanity to survive and culture to flourish. It's a way of considering the landscape, the conservation, the biology, the geology, all of the layers that are in that zone and incorporating them as one. So in terms of um, New Zealand's first year park, I mean, it, it's a great way of showcasing what we've already got in our environment. And it's a different approach to what's existing in New Zealand already. We've got great and fantastic national parks, lots of reserves and lots of um, open green spaces that people can connect with. This is a way or approach of, of taking people to those spaces but educating them about those spaces at the same time. For Banks Peninsula, it's a unique kind of landscape both cultural and geographical in terms of the constraints of what's going on there and also about what's what's already occurring in that landscape and the environments and who's living there and so if you were going to go and impose a national park in this area that would start constraining and restricting the land use of those of those communities and in some respect if you put a national park on those areas you would then make those communities unsustainable, you would reduce the farming, you would actually probably limit farming completely and it wouldn't be a benefit to those societies. Over the past three years we've had visits from three international geoparks. Um, two of those have been uh, developing geoparks and one of, those, one of them has also been a uh, geopark in operation. One of the developing geoparks um, is in Indonesia and it was a great way of showcasing Banks Peninsula to them. Uh, we took them out to Birdlings Flat, 
showed them the eel trap, showed them the coastal cliffs and they were amazed by the scenery. Then drove over to Akaroa Harbour and took them out on a, on a harbour cruise uh, and showcasing them the, the Hector's dolphins, the seals, and they were just amazed by what's already on offer in the area. And by the fact that a lot of the infrastructure that is required for a geopark is already in place. As a visitor to the Paihiri Geopark, you will have the opportunity to explore ancient volcanoes that have been eroded by the sea and connected to the mainland of New Zealand over time. You will explore an ecosystem buzzing with life and interaction, from the world's smallest dolphin to the world's smallest penguin, as well as creatures of the larger varieties. Explore Māori history by visiting one of the many pa sites that lie along the coast. Experience the incredible cultural history of New Zealand as Māori and European history combine and the new arrival settled and worked the land. Visit a bustling community of farmers, artisans, ecotourism operations and retailers happy to welcome you year round. So the sorts of visitors that the Geopark will bring, uh, there will be a, quite a mix actually. Um, we're talking about local visitors, so from the Christchurch area, connecting with their landscape and seeing Banks Peninsula more than just a fish and chip stop on, on Sunday and a drive to Akaroa, but spending more time and connecting with their, with their own backyard. And then internationally, looking at the international tourists and, and bringing those people into the environment and looking at Christchurch more than just a, a gateway to the South Island of New Zealand but showcasing what we've got in this area of Banks Peninsula. Of the of the geopark concept, uh, a lot of thought has been put into consideration of what the, the name was. Um, this has been in con consultation with, with local iwi and looking at what the meanings of, of these names actually represent. We did propose Horamaka um, and this was viewed upon as kind of an older term for the, the Greater Banks Peninsula as a whole. Um, what we found in terms of as we progressed this um, investigations is that Horamaka is recognised by some Brunanga as an appropriate name for Banks Peninsula but for others it's not the, uh, an accepted holistic name for Banks Peninsula. In 2013 we had a meeting, a workshop meeting where we had a, a lot of people around the same table and talked about uh, the proposal of the Geopark and the name or the term Paiheri uh, was proposed or discussed at that, at that meeting. And so the term Paiheri is actually meaning to bundle together or to unite those, those um, communities. So Paiheri, to bundle together, to, to, to celebrate and unify what is Banks Peninsula is really the, the background of the name. So key in the further development of the, of the Geopark is further reaching out and really establishing our partnerships with those invested in the Banks Peninsula environment and communities and also looking further afield in terms of what funding is available and how we can really start showcasing what we've got on offer. What we'd hope to achieve is kind of people looking out the window and saying actually what is there is significant. We don't want to build all the way up to the top of it, we want to keep some of that natural land use values in check and through that education people will then come to value what they've got in their own backyard. So Banks Peninsula has a unique range of somewhat isolated communities and then also kind of booming tourist industries to port industries to vibrant cafe industries. What we'd like to see is having something for those smaller communities. So increasing visitors to that area which will then hopefully spur off into sustainable development. So it's a great opportunity for New Zealand to, to jump on board of these geoparks and really see something um, positive coming back to these little unique communities.